Director Jeff Hamm is here to talk about his film Porch Pirates. And I really want to know what inspired this film. Because if you've ever had something taken from your porch, stolen, a package, you are going to want to hear about this. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for hey. joining me today. Yeah, Porch, what's going on, Chris? Uh, a lot. I... I am this movie could uh, inspire everyone who's ever anyone who's ever had something stolen off their porch. It's happened to me. It's very frustrating. I leave the Amazon instructions. They don't always follow it, but I'm going to assume that this, this movie was inspired by that very thing. Having packages stolen. It's so frustrating. Yeah, no doubt. Um, well, in, in all honesty, like the our our intent for this movie was just to create a family friendly, just holiday fun movie, and um, yeah, definitely inspired by real life events. Stuff happens here. Uh, I'm I'm from Texas. The movie was made in Texas, so yeah, we have that uh, epidemic, and it seems to kind of arise um, a little bit more as we get closer to the holiday season for obvious reasons. Everybody's ordering packages off of Amazon and. Um, all that stuff. So yeah, uh, we, we just saw like a bunch of news articles pop up and things like that. And me and Jay were like, uh, Jay's one of the co-writers, uh, and also the executive producer on the project. Um, and also plays, uh, one of the detectives in the movie. Um, we just were inspired by, you know, what would be really funny is, uh, East Texas buddy cop comedy chasing down porch pirates. I never heard that term. Now I know it porch pirate. Por Porch Pirates? Well, it's it's kind of funny because like when we were doing it, uh, like Jay and I had been doing a bunch of research, right? We we saw a ton of articles about, you know, it's it's big with you know Amazon getting as big as it as it is, packages get just getting left on porches. People are trying uh new and creative ways to keep people from stealing their packages. I think one uh there's a YouTube guy uh by the name of Mark Rober. I think that's his name. Uh, he created like a device to uh, stop porch pirates and stuff on his YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, all those little things were like, you know what? Uh, this is kind of a funny premise, you know? Um, so we just built off of that. Yeah. I've seen those videos where someone opens a package and glitter blows up in their face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's hilarious. Yeah, no, I, but it's happened to me. I mean, recently it's really frustrating. So, but what's weird is I love the videos where people just shoot like these, weird videos that go viral where someone tries to steal a package or gets really creative about trying to take them to it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Or, or the fun ones are when somebody goes up there and they don't realize that the nest cam can actually talk back and they're yeah. like, hey, I, I see you. <laughs> yeah. Like, put it back. Yeah. Put it back. Well, let's actually take a look at the trailer for this movie. So I've got it all hooked up here. Let's do it. Here it is. I'm going to go full screen on this. Give me a sec. I'm going to mute myself while we play the trailer. So here we go. Apparently, packages are being stolen off of people's porches by Santa Claus wearing a pirate's mask. I need you all to head over to the mayor's house. It looks like he was the latest victim of some porch pirates. Can you give us a list of the items stolen? There was a box of glass Christmas pickles. Christmas pickles? Christmas pickles. Weird. Oh, and a rare beanie baby for our collection. We paid north of 20 grand for it. Would you say $20,000 for a stuffed toy? Yeah, but what I don't understand is how did this thief know that we weren't home? Looks like we got bad Santa on our hands. We're like we're dealing with a professional, man. Kid looks familiar to you. You know his parents named him after some country singer, uh, Kenny Rogers. Oh, yeah, that's it. With a name like that, you think he'd know when to walk away? <laughs> oh, wow, she's a real keeper. Cotton doesn't take a holiday, sis. Let's keep this on the down low. Yeah, we don't need the office stone. We just got outsmarted by a toy. Technically, they're Owen too. Stupid drone. Ooh. 
who put okay. together your trailer? I did. Nice. I edited the trailer. Nice. Mm -hmm. I, I, I also edited the movie as well. So uh, yeah. Uh, well, I got started. Yeah, yeah I got started in filmmaker, right? Yeah, do five jobs. Yeah, exactly. Well, especially, yeah, I mean, you got you're working with um indie budgets, you know. Uh you get to wear a lot of hats for sure. Mm -hmm. What uh, how'd you raise the money for this? Uh, to put the whole project together. Yeah. So Jay, Jay's our executive producer and um, he's, you know, he loves making movies um, and he also loves acting. He's really great. Um, but yeah, he, um, he basically, he was the one who, who brought the money to the table for us to make it. Now um, it's coming out mm -hmm. on, uh, is it around Thanksgiving? It's on Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be live on Amazon and Apple TV on Thanksgiving Day. Well, look, as an indie filmmaker, you know, um, and I, I, I've made films myself. You have nine jobs, not enough time and not enough money. What were some of the challenges in putting this project together? Some of the challenges were and a lot of it was overcome by we have a really great producer on set by the name of Ray Mons, And um, he is. Uh, he's one of those guys he's like two steps ahead of you every every which way you know hey we need to go from house to house stealing packages off of people's porches like how do you do that realistically we have to walk into a neighborhood and knock on everybody's door and say hey can we film uh, a quick moment on your porch like you guys don't have to come out we're not setting up lights or anything um and so we literally just went from house to house to neighborhood to neighborhood and ray was one step ahead of us the whole time and just like texting me the addresses or saying hey i've got one over here i've got one over here and so uh we were able to string together that was probably the most challenging part of this entire thing everything else is like you know you set up you've got lights you've got your scene uh we had an awesome warehouse that we could uh that we could film in for the porch pirates little clubhouse um and then uh yeah the community was just so welcoming uh we we shot in kilgore texas and um little east east texas town uh and they were just so welcoming that they even like provided cop cars and we were like hey we're gonna film a scene can we have a couple cop cars and like how many do you need uh, we'll send them all, you know, <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, we only need a few. But uh, yeah, that's just, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, is it is it easier making? I mean, look, indie film is wherever you're making it. Right. It's not like you don't need Hollywood. But do you feel like you got more resources at your disposal because you were shooting in Texas? I I believe so. And and honestly, I think a lot of films are coming to Texas for that reason. People are yeah. way more accommodating their um, they love movies, you know, Texas loves movies. And I, and I feel like, you know, reaching out to somebody in Texas, Hey, can I use your house for a four or five days? You know, even, um, you know, even like, uh, Airbnb properties and things like that. The owners are like, you know what? Yeah, that's, that's great. You know, let's, let's work it out. Let's figure it out. And, um, they're just way more accommodating than I've noticed in other States. What was the casting process for you? The casting process. So we worked with a casting director by the name of Ronnie Hummel. She was pretty amazing bringing people to the table. So as we got the script finished, obviously we were looking for important key roles. And I, one of the biggest key roles I think um, was the mom played by uh, Candace Kirkpatrick um, and uh, will be the, the wife of Jay's character. And then uh, the um, sister of Phil's character. So there's like this um, fun, fun moment between uh, two brother-in-laws there uh, as the two detectives, but um, she was kind of like the one of the integral roles in the entire thing. So it felt like um, Jay, uh, he wrote the script. He, we wrote his character basically for him. So everything kind of built around that. And then when we found our Maria, everything kind of built out from there. But um, yeah, we found, we found a lot of people in Texas, but um, I think Candace was out of uh, Franklin, Tennessee, and then Molly Peyton White, um, she's one of the porch hearts. She's out of LA. Now there are guns in this film. Guns are no, uh, a stranger to, uh, Texas. Uh, you know, I almost feel like they hand you a, a gun when you uh, enter the state, but, um, yeah. uh, how was that? Were the, did that present any challenges uh, with any of the scenes? Did you have to let so, them know, do you have an yeah. honor? Like what was the process? 
So the um, the great thing about Ray, again, <laughs> one of our producers, is uh, he is a he is a uh, he's an instructor, and so um, he knows guns in and out. And so before we did anything with the guns, you know, he was the guy. We cleared everything, we checked it with everybody before we even shot a scene or pulled it out of the holster. But we didn't have any uh, live ammunition at all on set. Mm -hmm. So um, that was my goal. I was like, everything, if there's a gunshot, we'll do it digitally. I mean, obviously, in December of last year, I think we were a few months following the whole rust incident. So it was like, yeah. maybe maybe we get a little, be a little bit more safe um, here. So it was definitely a lot of checks and balances before those guns even uh, approached the set. I notice more and more filmmakers, even on bigger budget movies, are using digital, like, you know, gunshot, it's, it's, you know, done, uh, it's a post-process. It's very, you wouldn't know it unless you pointed it out. And mm -hmm. even then with the audio, it just, you know, you don't need it. Did you have like challenges or with effects in the film? Like there's, I know there's a lot of post effects. Yeah, there, there's a, there's a quite a few. Yeah. Um, for the gunshots, we actually utilize a lot of, um, uh, lighting. So we just set our lighting up to be kind of a trigger and uh, just timed it. It took a few takes to get it right. But uh, once we nailed it, it was like, good, that's it. Let's, uh, let's move on. So, yeah, that was that was one of the challenges. Because as you know, if you fire, well, you may or may not know. But if you fire. No, gun, no, I've, <laughs> I have, I've been to a gun range. I've been to a yeah, gun, yeah. Beverly Hills Gun Club. I've, I've shot my share of guns. So the, the flash of a gun is its own light source. And so when you shoot it in a dark room or a warehouse or something like that, uh, it changes the lighting. And so I really wanted to try to get that right. We actually only have one um, technical gunshot that's actually fired on camera. The rest of it is detect detectives with their guns out looking for, uh, you know, raiding houses and things like that. But um, but yeah, there's there's only one that's on screen. I got to think with this being so rampant, I don't know what the, the stats are, but, you know, I can I, I every person I know has had a package stolen. They've had an experience with that. I got to think that almost helps with the marketing. And and here's a, a one of the websites, porchpirates.mov, where you can get info on where to uh, where to get the film. The trailers there. Uh, but tell us, did that kind of does that kind of help with the marketing? It's it's top of mind for people right now. Yeah, and I think as we get closer to Christmas, it's going to be more and more on people's mind. I'll, I'll give you kind of one of my experiences. Um, I bought a camera last year, and on the instructions were I was supposed to be there to sign for it. Mm -hmm. um, I showed up to my house, and you know, you have fifteen thousand dollar camera just sitting on my porch, going, oh. "Okay, this has been sitting there for five hours." Like, um, uh, you know, it it it, it could have easily somebody could have walked away with it, and that would have been a, a kind of a disaster just trying to sort through claims and all that stuff. And, you know, people do it all the time, you know, and uh, I couldn't even imagine in the movie, one of the synopsis is uh, they still the mayor's beanie baby, which was valued at $25,000, which is, you know, beanie babies can get stupid expensive. Um, even though the actual beanie baby that you stole in the movie is probably like a $7 beanie baby. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but we just, we just built off of that. The idea that, uh, you know, at Christmas time uh, deliveries can get a little bit, you know, frantic and, and busy. Um, and maybe they don't get the signatures all the time because it's happened to me and they'll leave it on the front porch and it could be something of extreme value, you know? So um, that's where we, we kind of built off of that. Cool. Well, uh, porch pirates is out uh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving day uh, available on all platforms, I assume. Yeah. Right now, um, right now it's listed for Amazon, Roku TV and Apple TV, but it will, uh, we'll be adding a lot more um, streamers in the future. Well, just go to porchpirates.mov to find out where you can see the film. Check out the trailer. Uh, Jeff, thanks so much for talking to me on the show today. Appreciate it, Chris. Thank you so much.